hello guys welcome to my channel knowledge unlimited and in this tutorial we will be continuing the topic from where we have left and let me change this to two so this will be the second tutorial and uh, in the last tutorial if you recollect uh, we covered these three points like why timing analysis is important and what is meant by static timing analysis and what is setup time so we stopped at the point where we will be analyzing how setup time can be visualized okay so from here we will go and i told you in the tutorial one that to analyze the setup time we need to go internal to the flip-flop so to save time here i have a snippet of a latch um i'm not sure whether it's a positive latch or negative latch so that we are going to see in a while uh, but this is a latch with the transmission gate so if you see t1 is one transmission gate t2 is another transmission gate and these two are inverters and this is q and this is q bar so uh, let's see a two scenarios where the clock is zero and the clock is one which are the two possible cases in a waveform here clock is one and here clock is zero so if you see here if clock uh, is zero how the transmission gate will be acting whether it's a closed switch or open switch to know that one need to understand the working of the transmission gate so I'm, i won't go much in detail but it's a it's a very simple explanation i can give here uh, for the understanding if you see this side is the nmos and this is the pmos so nmos will be on when the gate equal to logic high or one so if you treat like this is clock and this is clock bar and if clock is one this nmos is on and this pmos is also on because it will get zero here inversion of clock so whatever you are transmitting as input it will come as output so it acts like a closed switch similarly in the other case when clock is zero then the nmos will be off as well as the pmos will be off because for the gate of nmos you will get a logic low or zero volts and this will be off and this will be up so it will it will act like an open switch so if you know uh, this details close switch we can redraw the same diagram in the following way so if clock is zero if um, uh, if clock is zero t1 will be uh, what we call clock is zero means this will be off t1 will be off and t2 will be on because if you see here for the nmos here clock bar is given is here clock is given here clock bar is given sorry it's not visible here clock bar and here clock is given similarly when the clock is one t1 will be on and t2 will be off so if you draw the same diagram the equivalent of this will be t1 is off so it acts like an open switch and then there is one inverter followed by one more inverter and this will be on which means it acts like a closed switch so here it's q bar here it's q here it's the input similarly when clock equal to one the equivalent diagram will be t1 will be on so it is closed switch and then an inverter inverter and this will be our open switch and here it's q bar here it's q as simple as that so one simple way to say that this is latch is in one scenario it is passing whatever the input it is input output equal to input here input and output are disconnected but whatever there in the previous case is coming same as the output either in this path or this path it's just inversion of the input but still the point here is the output equal to previous state value which clearly states that this is a latch but whether it's a positive latch or negative latch we will be seeing in a while but how to say directly that it's a latch is this simple way in one path it is acting transparent then output is directly equal to input in other case it is uh, giving the previous state value so if you see here output equal to input when clock equal to one and clock equal to one output equal to input and one clock equal to zero output equal to previous input so this is what we have observed with the diagram so no matter how the data is changing or what the input is simply we can say that when the clock is high or when the clock is positive the output equal to input so it is following the input output is following the input when the clock is zero it is storing the previous value at this level whatever the output that is it is retaining the same value so we can call this as a positive latch so for positive cycle it is acting as the same uh, the output is uh, following the input in the negative cycle of it it is the previous value so the similar <coughs> thing what we can do is if you 
change here clock bar and here clock and similarly here clock and here clock bar so what you are doing is you are just replacing t2 with t1 and t1 with t2 so here you are replacing this with this and if you see the same diagram now this will be this output following input will be when clock equal to 0 and this will be when clock equal to 1 which means in the negative level of it output will follow the input and here output will be the previous state output which will act like a negative latch so it's very simple that the same diagram if you change the transmission gates it's like a negative latch and a positive latch in a, in a different way so now how to construct a flop with this is a negative latch followed by a positive latch will give negative edge triggered flop so why i am saying this is a negative latch followed by a positive latch will give a negative edge triggered flop why because negative latch is sensitive uh, let's say I, i'll draw a clock okay i'll draw one clock cycle and negative latch is sensitive here positive latch is sensitive here when you pass some data in the negative latch and followed by your capturing in the next time at the positive latch it will give a positive edge triggered flop this is positive edge triggered similarly in the opposite way when it's a positive latch followed by a negative latch it will give a negative edge triggered flop since i don't want to waste much time here i'm not drawing in detail how the output waveform will be and all because it's pretty much clear because you are seeing a timing analysis means you already know the operation of flop and latch so i'm, I'm directly drawing the waveform so how do you how this understanding will help you to know about the setup time is what the next important question so now here what you need to understand is if you see a flip-flop like this here is the input that you are giving to the flop at this point but this input here is what your your output is following the input right like this here if you see here if you see the output is following the input at this point here so for an output to follow the input the input should reach at least till this point but for the input to reach this point it need to travel all this way like this it should travel this delay of the transmission gate delay one delay one and the delay of this inverter d2 and the delay of this inverter d3 so for the input to reach this point it should travel some time right some delay let's say here d1 plus d2 plus d3 this time is called as the setup time so if the data reaches this time early then when the edge of clock comes the data will be already available at this point and that will be propagated or captured correctly at the output this is just for a latch i explained the similar thing is for the flop okay flop what you'll do you'll do put two latches where here one more transmission gate will come but the point is for the data to reach out it should be available at this point at this point if you see at this point here I think it's visible here at this point it should be available so this entire path it should travel right so that is called as setup time I hope you guys understood this is how you need to visualize then a uh, one more important question that can be asked in the interview is why can't it reach just till here why it should travel to th till this point and one more possible question that can be asked is why these two inverters are needed why can't um, why can't they can be a direct connection like this why this inverter is needed why can't be a just a transmission gate to transmission gate connection why can't it be so these are the two possible questions that can be asked now i'll explain the answers of those so that uh, you can answer them easily so the inverter is needed just because when the data is transferred through the delay line or through some path which has some delay the input or the signal will degrade or the slew will affect the slew of the signal will affect slew is the slope of the signal okay it idle sig like unlike idle signals it won't just raise or fall in zero time right it will take some time to raise or fall so that we called as slew which we will be discussing in the upcoming tutorials 
but to boost the signal or what we call to make the signal back to the normal form we need to have a buffer or inverters in the path which is a completely altogether in the digital ic design uh, which is a altogether new um, subject or topic which can be discussed in detail later but here a simple idea is the inverter is used to again uplift the signal or to get back its to normal form so that is why inverters are needed and coming to the next question why can't it is enough to reach till here why it should reach till this point is one more possible question okay so for that what i'm going to tell you is let's say data reached only till here okay let's say some data is reached only till here this x so in the next cycle when it's going to latch or send out the output this transmission gate will be turned on and this will pass whatever present here by the time if it comes till here okay if it comes till here let's say the previous value is different than the current value the current value is one the previous value is one the value that you are going to transmit um, I, I think i'm confusing you let's say the new input that you are giving is zero when it comes here it will become one when it passes this transmission gate again it will become sorry again it will become zero but let's say the previous value here is one so you are transmitting the wrong data that's it so to avoid this it is always safe and advisable for the data to come here so that the data that you are expecting to transmit you will be transmitted now that is how you need to visualize the setup time it is similar to the flop also if you think like mm, in the latch if you see in in the latch in this level how much time ahead it should come similarly when you put two back to back latches it will be analyzing at this edge okay similarly when you are done visualization of the setup time then you need to understand why setup time is important so it is important because if the data is not coming before this time then it might be stuck in in any of the state let's say if the data is not coming before this d1 plus d2 plus d3 then there is a possibility that it is stuck in somewhere here or somewhere here or somewhere here before reaching this point hence if the data is not coming before the required time or setup time you there is a possibility that you might be capturing the wrong value which is not how the expectation or the circuit should work right so with this how setup time can be visualized is done and why setup time is important is also done okay so i think we reached max time of the video so better i'll stop at this point and i'll cover some example questions and the rest of the things in the up next tutorial so i hope you guys learned something new in this video stay tuned to the stf playlist for the upcoming tutorials thank you